Alvarez. He is a short story writer and a journalist uh, based in Baltimore and Los Angeles. Among his many books are First and Forever, A History of the Archdiocese of Baltimore, and the short story collection Orlo and Laney. Laney. Lenny. Lenny. His new fiction collection, Tales from a Holy Land, will be released in early 2014. A former City Desk reporter for the Baltimore Sun and a current columnist for Maryland Life magazine, Alvarez wrote for the first three seasons of The Wire, HBO's award-winning police drama set in Baltimore. Thank you very much, Ray, for coming and showing up in the under us. Thanks for coming on a, uh, such a bright sunny day. Uh, looks like winter finally gave up. Um, I'd like to give a shout out. There's a table of folks towards the back who came all the way from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, just to attend the New York <laughs> And uh, one of the folks uh, is an editor of a literary magazine called the Vincent Brothers Review, and um, Almost, almost 24 years ago or so, published the very first Orlo and Lenny story. And uh, as some of you know, that is a story cycle in which a uh, a Greek woman and her a rapper lover uh, meet regularly over the course of some 50 years, and and they have this ritual meal they eat together, uh, which is pig's feet. Um, we saw some pig's feet today at Lexington Market, actually. And uh, only later did I find out that uh, Kim published the story because she liked it despite the fact that she's been a lifelong vegetarian and the pig feet made her sick. Um, so I'm glad to be here. New Mercury is definitely one of the very successful Baltimore reading series in Baltimore. And I'm going to be reading a, a holiday piece um, that was published in The Sun in 1993. Uh, I brought some of these if anyone's interested afterwards. It's an anthology of my Sun journalism. One of uh, my mentors is here, David Etlin, who taught me the uh, ins and outs of being a rewrite man. Um, and a rewrite man is sort of like a utility infielder. You work the desk and you do whatever needs to be done and you do it uh, in short order. It's, it's in many ways like being a short order cook. You just, you know, you make the eggs, you get it out, you make the eggs, you get it out. And But in the, when I wasn't working uh, rewrite, which we would call late rewrite, um, I would wander around the city and, and do these stories that were dear to me, often uh, looking into things I remembered from being a kid to see if they still existed. And um, th who here knows what the Easter tradition it, it's not religious it's a sort of a secular custom of of picking eggs is okay one two three picking eggs is where you would take your uh it, it's funny how much things have changed in our society a, a hard-boiled egg used to be something of actually a value that a kid in depression times you know it was a big deal you know i don't think a kid would probably turn up his nose today at a hard-boiled egg and um but when my father was young, um, food was uh, a measure of not necessarily prosperity, but of, of, of well-being. And you would take your hard-boiled egg on Easter morning, and you'd go up and down the alleys looking for, I guess this was something that kids between the ages of maybe 8 and, and 14 would do. And you'd put your, your, your Easter egg it was points and butts, and points were the narrow end of the of the egg, and the butt was the, the larger end. And you'd put it in your hand and, and make the smallest opening in the top for your opponent to... Bill, you, yeah. you remember this, don't you? Um, it, was, it was done across the city, uh, but particularly, I guess, in, in, in the Catholic neighborhoods. And uh, the other guy, you would go point to point, and you would crack. And um, whose ever egg uh, cracked, rarely would both eggs crack, but one egg would crack and that guy would lose that side. 
and then you'd flip it, and if you won both ends, you got the other guy's egg. Uh, and some of these folks would come home with their pockets bursting with, with, with hard-boiled eggs, and, um, you know, their mothers would peel them and, and, and make egg salad and, and, and things like that. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't waste these things. They were, they were a, a measure of, um, of, of something valuable. So in 93, and, and in my alley where I still live uh, in Greektown, all of my father's uh, first cousins lived up and down the alley. There were five sisters. Uh, my father's mother was one of five sisters who lived up and down the alley. And as years went on, it was only me and Uncle Gene left and Aunt Lola. Uh, Aunt Lola is the character, the title character of the, of the Italian cookie story that YPR runs every uh, Christmas. And Uncle Gene kept this alive. And um, uh, I'll tell you a story about Uncle Gene after I read this because uh, he passed away a couple years ago. At this time of year, back in the old days, the Easter cry sailed through the alleys of Baltimore. Who's got an egg? Who's got an egg? Chicken with a wooden leg. Who's got a guinea gee? Who's going to pick a me? The challenge was one of a basket full of Easter traditions peculiar to Baltimore. Rituals that included parades, butter shaped like lambs, and Easter Monday picnics in Druid Hill Park, customs that have faded with time. The cry of who's got an egg would bring youngsters out of their homes ready to do battle with hard boiled eggs dyed in shades of blue and pink and yellow. The game, which today endures around Easter tables only in certain families, worked like this. One kid wrapped his fist around his egg, leaving only the point exposed to the hole between thumb and index finger. The challenger used the point of his egg to aggressively tap the foe until one of the shells cracked. The eggs were tendo turned over and the game repeated with the butt end. The stronger egg would usually win at both ends, and the owner of the weaker egg would forfeit the ovum. <laughs> the ovum. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a writer for any length of time, as you grow older, you'll, you'll, you'll find that you don't need to use words like that. <laughs> um, uh, would forfeit the ovum that had failed him. If there was a draw, the uncracked point would battle the uncracked butt. The loser surrendered his egg. Quote, picking eggs was a big thing around the neighborhoods. I don't really know where it started, said Jean DiCarlo, senior, 68 who keeps their tradition alive in Highland Town with his grandchildren. You've got to remember, in them days, eggs weren't as plentiful as they are now. You want a hard-boiled egg from another kid, that was something good to eat. Old-timers remember the sight of champions running the alleys with the pockets of their Easter Sunday trousers bulging with eggs. Quote, I think picking eggs was just something they did around Baltimore, said Dorothy Kraft, 68, who grew up on Ducker Avenue. I never heard of out-of-towners doing it, as if any Baltimore kid had ever met an out-of-towner in their life. Right? I mean, when my mother grew up, if you know, if you went from Patterson Park to you know Druid Hill Park, that was out of town. For generations, it was part of the local Easter, along with cakes that looked like chickens and lumps of butter shaped like lambs, pre-dawn street processions, processions with Easter lilies, taking baskets of food to church to be blessed. Boys chasing girls on Easter Monday, known to some as Dingus Day, to beat them on the legs with switches. Uh, Deborah and I will be reviving that this Easter Monday. Um, uh, sunrise services at Memorial Stadium. Anybody ever go to a Sunrise Easter Mass at Memorial Stadium? Uh, Thaddeus remembers that. And the annual Easter parades along Charles Street and Pennsylvania Avenue. Quote, People would dress up in their Sunday best and parade up and down Pennsylvania Avenue, and we stayed dressed up until late in the evening, said Walter Taylor, a longtime resident of West Lafayette Avenue, who didn't want to give his age. It's just so beautiful, so exciting. I always like to wear a white tie, a white suit with a white shirt, white socks, and black and white shoes. The parades include people with Easter lilies. Quote, the lily is resurrection white for purity, said Wadsworth Robinson whose family has sold flowers from a shop on East Monument Street since 1935. That was the run around the corner from Elwood, Deb, where you are near Luby Chevrolet. Carrying a cut lily reminds me of authority, like a papal staff. They look delicate, but they're very tough. Pat Brezikowski remembers carrying a lily through Fells Point before the sun came up on Easter Sunday. 
We had to carry it from home to St. Stanislaus where we put them on the altar, she said. It was a tradition. On Charles Street, said 85-year-old Rose Ellen Clark, the Easter parade was, quote, something wonderful until too many automobiles began crowding the boulevard after World War II. This was back in the 20s and 30s when it was in its highlight, she said. People would walk in their finery coming from church all the way up Charles Street. People would just join in. There was no planning. It just happened. In the city's Polish neighborhoods, once Lent officially ended at noon on Holy Saturday, and today is Holy Saturday, um, families brought baskets of food to church to have them blessed. Yesterday, Father Joseph Grabowski, pastor of St. Casmer's on O'Donnell Street, blessed about 400 Easter baskets. One of them belonged to Catherine Smerticza, who keeps alive the Polish tradition of making lambs out of butter at her row house on South Linwood Avenue. Her basket, covered with a white cloth embroidered in the Ukraine with a Bible, chalice, and flowers, included homemade kielbasa, horseradish, a braided Polish bread called babka, raisin bread, hard boiled eggs dyed with onion skin, salt and pepper, and a lamb made from butter. Quote, my mother had metal molds that came from the old country, and every year at Easter time, she made butter in the shape of a lamb, said Mrs. Stramica. It's the sign of new life. The blessed food will be eaten today and after morning mass. Quote, and if it was blessed, you better be sure you didn't get no crumbs on the floor, Agnes Borkowski said. <laughs> and I'll end with this. Um, when Uncle Gene passed away, maybe three or four years ago, uh, at the viewing at the funeral home, uh, several of his uh, grandchildren stood at the front and took hard-boiled eggs out of their pockets, and they picked eggs for their, for their granddad uh, one last time. Happy Easter.